from destroying the world and starting again to adding VR and history lessons, it's time for the games that are even better now than they were at launch. Back in gaming's infancy, a bad game, well, it just stayed bad. There was no simple way to update a console cartridge or a broken arcade machine. And before the internet, even PC games required magazine-mounted discs to fix their problems. But these days, a shaky release isn't the end of a game's journey. It's possible for a title to redeem itself through artful patches, consumer feedback, and in extreme cases, by totally destroying the world and starting again. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are also some already brilliant games that have got even better than they were at launch thanks to standard setting DLC and patches. This list then is a collection of titles that have aged like fine wine. Oh, and if it's your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss another video from us. Back to this one though, here are seven games that are better now than they were when they were first released. Yes, let's start with the biggie. After an E3 showing that made it look like the game to end all games, complete with enormous alien dinosaurs, No Man's Sky was released to, well, kind of the opposite of critical acclaim. The infinite universe might have been just that, but the lack of the promised multiplayer and, well, a real purpose just wasn't well received by a community hungry for what had been teased. But rather than shutting themselves in a bunker and putting their fingers in their ears, Hello Games started rafting away on the game that they always wanted No Man's Sky to be. Now, in 2019, the No Man's Sky Beyond update has just arrived, and while there has been a multitude of updates since release, this is the one that's closest to what was once promised. VR has been seamlessly integrated to let you disappear into endless colourful space, and the multiplayer is finally a slick, complete offering for fun with friends. Other players no longer appear as mere orbs, but instead as fully realised explorers. And even if you just want to wave hello, this is a universe that feels alive at last. Oh, and on top of that, base building has received dangerous levels of granular upgrades with power and wiring. And of course, I'm saving the best for last, but those weird procedurally generated creatures that you've always loved and put on social media, well, you can now milk them. Yum. Collect their <clears throat> feceum and even ride them. Tally ho! Oh, look, an Assassin's Creed game in a list that I have something to do with. What a bloody coincidence. But, and hear me out here, it's important to talk about games that are perfect and become even better. Or perfecter, yes. It's a word. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of these. Cassandra's, or indeed Alexios, main adventure might finish after 50 hours or so, but that doesn't mean that the ancient Greek fun is over. In fact, it's only just getting started. Endless quests await, scattered across the map, and if you're sick of riding across the most absurdly attractive open world in years, you can always head to Elysium, Hades, or Atlantis in the genuinely jaw-droppingly beautiful Fate of Atlantis DLC. Definitely apologise early to your screenshot button. Plus, given the extra year before next year's Assassin's Creed title, Ubi has dived into new waters and added a user-created story mode. Here, the community can actually create quests of their own and let other people play them. And yes, they've taken out the super XP farming ones to teach us that we shouldn't be allowed nice things. Finally, if all of that wasn't enough, there's even a chance to educate yourself at the same time. And not just about magical spears. Following in Origins, sneaky footsteps, Ubi has just added a discovery tour mode that turns off all the murder and makes ancient Greece a historical playground, complete with guided tours. And this time around, you better pay attention as there's even a quiz at the end of each tour. No, taking notes is cheating. So you think you are ready for a test? Very well. Let us see how you fare. Final Fantasy XIV is the classic example of a game that's a million times better now than it was at release. Full of overcomplicated systems, copy-pasted maps, and an interface more turgid than fat chocobo dung, the original was critically panned at launch back in 2010. It was so bad that the dev team appointed to clean up the mess decided to drop a moon on it. No, that's not a euphemism. They literally dropped a moon, obliterating the game world entirely and starting from scratch. 
Thus, the realm was reborn and it's been going from strength to strength ever since. With its emphasis on great storytelling and varied gameplay, Final Fantasy XIV has overcome its disastrous past entirely. The recently released third expansion, Shadowbringers, now proudly stands at the pinnacle of modern MMOs. But it hasn't forgotten where it all started. It's thrown in several sneaky references to the first release and even recreated a city that was supposed to appear in the original version but never made it. By doing so, it's as if Final Fantasy XIV has reclaimed its past and is now completely unshackled from the horrors of the original. Long may it walk in the light of the crystal. We have satisfied thy demands, will thou now satisfy ours? It's not an easy job crafting a persistent universe for hundreds of thousands of Guardians, but Bungie has only gone and done it twice. The original Destiny started off a little uneven, but with the release of the Taken King, it settled into grindy, exotic brilliance. For Destiny 2 then, it seemed only natural that things would flow a little better than the first time around, what with all those lessons and all. Unfortunately, while the campaign was excellent, the Destiny community wasn't pleased with the lack of new enemies and, most importantly, the endgame content at launch. Infusion was limited, exotics were dropping almost too regularly, and weaponry as a whole had been revamped in a way that no one really liked. And don't get me started on consumable shaders. Thankfully now though, with the release of last year's Forsaken DLC, Destiny 2 has had its Taken King moment. Infusion and masterwork weapon problems have been ironed out, praise the Moon Wizards for no longer having to feed identical weapons to each other, and Bungie is constantly evolving the meta with the community. The incoming Shadowkeep expansion will change the game even more with the return of Eris Morn. Yay for creepy blindfolds. And we're going back to the moon. As well as a new slice of campaign, Shadowkeep brings some other big changes. We'll be able to jump in and out for seasons instead of being all in for the annual pass, and the power cap is on its way up to the heady heights of 960. Just be warned, expect to lose six hours specking up your hunter when you do pick it back up again. I speak from experience. Let's have a quick history lesson, shall we? Are you sitting comfortably? Gaze back through the mists of time, okay, two years ago, which is basically like a decade in Epic Games' schedule terms, and you'll discover that Fortnite wasn't always the world-beating battle royale behemoth it is today. It turns out that back in 2017, your favourite game wasn't about picking off people or dancing in their exploded loot. Building was still a thing, but it was all about zombies, and it was called Fortnite Save the World. This wasn't necessarily a bad thing. We all love zombies. Check out our best zombie games on screen now to find out just how much. But Save the World's co-op survive em up didn't quite spark the imagination in the way that Epic would have liked. So, a few months later, it released the Fortnite Battle Royale mode as a standalone option. It was compellingly simple to understand, capitalised on the buzz around PUBG, and most importantly, was free. And the rest, as they say, like your 99 opponents, is history. Fortnite in this new form grabbed a hold of more than 250 million players and just didn't let go. Now earning billions of dollars with a seasonal schedule that constantly switches up the game and keeps things fresh, Fortnite Battle Royale is endlessly evolving. Sure, there have been some controversial additions, anyone else still smarting from the mech? But Epic is constantly nerfing and tweaking away to make sure that Fortnite is an endlessly evolving experience. And that can only ever be a really good thing. And here we have another of those games that started off brilliant, stayed brilliant and got even better. When it comes to The Witcher 3, there was never really anything to fix. But it's a measure of exactly how good CD Projekt Red's essential RPG is that they still somehow managed to make a great game even better. And yes, I allowed Matt to have this in the script because I got assassins. Since the original release back in 2015, Geralt's adventures have had plenty of minor tweaks to refine and perfect. Some of them mere visual upgrades, others much more in-depth, like the control tweak from patch 1.07 that allows you to change how Geralt moves. But the biggest addition and the reason to still play The Witcher 3 in 2019 is the incredible DLC. 
The Witcher 3's first expansion, Hearts of Stone, is a superb example of how to get paid DLC add-ons just right. It's a genuine reason to return to a game that you've already spent hours playing, with a story long and detailed enough to get properly invested in. You could say it's like sinking into a warm bath of witchery goodness. Ah. <sighs> The second DLC package, Blood and Wine, indisputably sets CD Projekt Red apart as a team that takes expansion packs seriously, providing an elongated questline, a gorgeous new area, and a smart and thoughtful farewell to one of the most iconic characters in gaming. Oh, and if you haven't already played, start now, and you'll be even closer to Cyberpunk 2077. Been through hell and high water, you and me. The fact is, you know me better than anyone else does. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thanks for everything. It's easy to be nostalgic about the early days of Minecraft. As you think back to your first night in the game, spent cowering in a mud hole while zombies and spiders hissed around you. Or maybe you were there even before then, in the days before Minecraft had running water. But the truth is that because many of today's gamers grew up playing Minecraft or watching YouTube videos about it, the game feels like a genuine rite of passage. But that doesn't mean that we should be precious about it. As good as the classic version of Minecraft was, the game is better today than it's ever been. Mojang has been building, so to speak, to heady heights in the last decade. No, I didn't just say that to make you feel old. Honest. Minecraft's most recent tweak, the Village and Pillage update, is a great reminder of what makes this blocky life choice so compelling. It manages to add new systems, fresh weapons, blocks, and mobs without diluting the core experience. With the addition of pillagers, villages are no longer serene sanctuaries to have a rest in. But importantly, there's still that same sense of discovery and invention that forms the bedrock, yes, just like the bedrock in the game, of this deeply creative world. Oh, and that's without taking into account all the community-created mods, the shaders, the servers, the new game types that diligent fans have shared the world in the 10 years since release, changing not only the game itself, but the wider industry as a whole. Minecraft, quite literally, hasn't just improved, it's changed the world. Well, that seems like a pretty good place to finish. So that's the games that are even better now than they were at launch, even if they were pretty great to begin with. Let us know your favourite improved games in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know exactly when our next video lands.